Today I'm bringing you a floral thank you card with alcohol marker coloring on colored cardstock. I'm not one to have master coloring skills, but I am the kind of person that will try the unexpected to see if it works. And today, that unexpected is coloring on gray paper instead of white. Hi everyone, I'm Yana Smakula and I'm hoping you love this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Ring the bell too to be notified of every new upload. I started working on my card by stamping a sentiment that reads, thank you for being who I needed the most. Here I'm working on a panel of Simon Says Stamp Fog cardstock cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. All of the supplies I'm using today, by the way, are listed in the video description below and in the blog post associated with this video. I treated my paper with an anti-static powder tool. This helps to keep embossing nice and clean, and I always use this tool when I plan to do heat embossing. Next, I inked up the stamps that I already have arranged on the door of my Mini Misty stamping tool with Simon Says Stamp Clear Embossing Ink. My original plan was to white heat emboss this message in the center of this panel, and I used white detail embossing powder from Hero Arts to do this. As I work on this card, you'll see me change my mind later and replace the sentiment with the one stamped in black ink on white cardstock. But I still wanted to include this part of the heat embossing in this video to show you that not everything has to go according to plan, and it's totally okay to change things up along the way and you'll see me change quite a few things. You probably also noticed that my sentiment wasn't stamped in the center of my panel. It was bothering me. It wasn't off to the side enough to make it look like it was intentional, and it also wasn't perfectly centered. So to fix that, I trimmed my panel down slightly using my paper trimmer. It's a trick I always use if I happen to not stamp something perfectly centered on my card. Now, I also started with a sentiment here first, as I needed to see how much room it would take on my card. My idea was to use beautiful flowers from the Moments of Grace stamp set and stamp a floral frame around the sentiment coming in from the edges. When I was planning this card, I knew I wanted to try and color these images with my Copic markers. So I picked Simon's Intense Black Ink for stamping these images. This ink has many fabulous qualities, including being alcohol resistant, so it makes it the perfect choice for this particular project. I picked a few images from the Moments of Grace set and started stamping them in black ink, forming the frame. I did not use my stamping tool here, such as Misty, as when I do this much stamping, it actually just slows me down. So I went with good old clear blocks and kind of hoped that I wouldn't have any problem areas on my stamping. The key to stamping a frame like this, when your images are almost identical in size, is to stamp them one by one next to each other. You'll see that I did not stamp three identical flowers in three different sections on my card like I usually would if I'm stamping a background pattern. No, here I stamp the flower, Next, I stamped a leaf immediately next to it, added another leaf, again, next to the previous one, and another flower, and I moved with my stamping in two opposite ways or directions from my first stamped images, filling the entire panel. This way, I was sure I wouldn't have any odd gaps on my panel, and my frame stamping would look nice and balanced. For this project, I also pulled out most of the clear blocks from my stash and I mounted each image onto its own separate block. This is the key to stamping efficiently and also the key to clean fingers. If you use just one or two clear blocks to stamp a multitude of images, you end up having to remove the image from the block a bunch of times. And if you are like me, if you do not clean your stamps after each use, you run the risk of getting your fingers dirty and thus leaving an inky fingerprint on your card. Once my floral stamping was done, I used a heart image from this same stamp set and stamped it several times in the background, filling any gaps. Later, I once again changed my mind about the black hearts. I did not like how dark they looked, and I replaced them with colorful enamel heart stickers instead. Time to color. Before I started coloring my panel, I used the scrap pieces of this cardstock to test the Copic marker colors that I was planning to use. Alcohol markers are translucent, meaning they will not give you opaque coverage. 
You'll be able to see the color of the surface from under the coloring. So it's always best to use these kinds of markers on white cardstock to have their true colors show. But that doesn't mean you cannot try and color with these on other light colors of paper for slightly different results. I personally love to have non-white backgrounds on my cards, and this prompted me to try and color with these markers on colored cardstock. The colors will not be the same as they would be on white paper. They will be duller, but they can still be used to color with. I used RV14, RV13, and RV11 colors to color some of the flowers. When I first applied the color, it looked dark and muddy in a way. But as the marker dried or the alcohol evaporated, the colors became lighter and much more pleasing to the eye. For the leaves, I used YG17 color and YG03. And the same happened here. At first, colors were dark, the paper was wet, but as it dried, the colors started to look a bit more vibrant. And like I said, they will not look the same as when used on white paper, but they will still give you some color. I would not recommend trying this type of coloring on dark colors of cardstock as the markers will not show on dark papers properly. They will just darken the paper and they will not add much color to it. But you should be safe coloring on light colors of cardstock and also on craft. Coloring with Copic markers on craft is very popular and it looks gorgeous, especially for fall cards. For the yellow flowers, I used Y17. Y19 and Y13 colors. I associate pink, yellow, and green with spring, and since I'm longing for spring to come because it's been too cold and too gloomy for far too long, I really wanted to have some spring beauty on my card. I had trimmed this panel down even more. It ended up being three and three quarters by five inches, and I felt mounted it onto an A2 white side folding card base. Next, I'm using my white pen. This is Jelly Roll Pen, 0A size from Sakura, and I'm adding lots of white dots in between the stamped images. I love how my friend Mae Park does this on her cards, and I'm often inspired to recreate this look on my projects. This white pen is the best one out there. I've tried a few white pens in my crafting journey, and I found that I prefer this brand the most. In fact, I just purchased a set of three new pens in various sizes. This 08 size, the 05 size, and the 10 size. I only had the 10 size before. Here I moved on to adding the enamel hearts over the black stamped hearts. The black looked too dark for this spring-inspired card, so adding teal or light teal seemed like a better idea and a nice fix. With tiny images like these, I like to use my tool-in-one from Spellbinders to pick them up and position precisely on the card. It's much more difficult to position them using my fingers. At this point, I realized that I didn't quite like the center section of this card. It just didn't look right to me, so I ended up creating this white hexagon cardstock shape with the sentiments stamped over it. I cut the shape out using my paper trimmer, but you can certainly cut it out using a die if you like. I foam mounted it in place in the center of my card, and lastly I added a few more of those enamel hearts from Doodlebug. A red one in the center, and two yellow hearts on each side to coordinate with the colors of flowers I have on my project. I hope you'll give this idea a try using these or other stamps from your stash. If you do, remember to share online and tag us on social media. We always enjoy seeing what you guys are making. On the screen, there's a link to a playlist with all of my videos featuring Simon Says DM Stamps. Subscribe now not to miss any new card making videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.